in this video i'm going to replace my direct drive and going back to the regular bowden tube i got this new hot end from amazon it comes with some extra nozzles which i will link in the description and first let's talk about my setup real quick here so i do have the direct drive i have a cr touch nothing wrong with it i just wanted to do an installation video for a regular hot end so this is that video we'll take this apart first i will still leave the cr touch on and we'll take this out so i need to loosen this here take the belt uh, from underneath take this out and then install the hot end so let's get started so now let me take the belt off hopefully you can see this you see this from underneath there's this belt that we need to push back and it will come out there is obviously the other side here so this is the x axis belt if i can get my camera to focus so i just need to push it back here hopefully that is visible enough now we got the belt out we're just gonna have to you can see this is from underneath the direct drive and now we need to loosen this and take it out so you can see the belt is already loosened here now i'm going to cut these zip ties to get the cables untangled and by the way if you don't have a direct drive or if you don't have a cr touch that is fine don't worry about this initial steps you can go directly to the hot end installation which is going to be in a few minutes but i'm still going to go through these steps to just show you how to take this out in case you already have a direct drive or you have a cr touch but if you don't then skip forward and you will see the hot end installation but now i'm going to cut these zip ties get the wires out so we can take this out be careful not to cut the wires here so as you take these uh, zip ties there you go so to take that direct drive out you need to loosen that bottom wheel with your allen key you can also take it from the side if you want but i find it losing that uh, bottom wheel is the easiest way use losing that with your allen key and then you can just lift out the direct drive and then it comes out like that so now we just need to put in the new rail for the new hot end so this is the direct drive and just a quick reminder that i do need to take out or unscrew the cr touch and move that to the new base so we will do that now there are two screws here for the CR touch. Once again, if you don't have a CR touch, you can skip this part. And uh, I unhooked all the cables. Eventually, we will look at the cables from the motherboard side. This is the base for the regular hot end. And make sure it's clean. And you can see I've loosened this bottom wheel. And let me show you how we put this on. So you would go here. These top two wheels goes here. And then it clicks on here then tighten that we have to tighten that bottom wheel on it and it should be good then we will put that belt back on since i have the direct drive so i have my extruder the stepper motor on the side removed so i'm putting this back it goes on here and i have the dual gear extruder upgrade so i'm going to do that as well all you need to do for this is to adjust the steps in the settings which i will show you eventually and before i put this handle on you see there is this flat screw here this one is the flat goes here the other ones are just the regular screws and you put that stepper motor on here and the cable uh, plugs in here so that's going to be the extruder or the e cable uh, goes here and no more direct drive for me at least for now i might go back to it eventually but for now i'm just doing this installation so we'll do the dual gear now i'm gonna put the handle and the spring that goes here and that part should be done now my stepper motor is installed with the dual gear and the handle and everything by the way if you don't have the dual gear that's fine you should be just fine with the default uh, stepper motor and the default extruder settings that way you don't even need to adjust the settings but again 
I will show you how to adjust the settings for the dual gear at the end. Before I can install the hot end, what I need is the fan and this wire sleeve from my old one. Because you see, I did not buy the fan or the sleeve. This is just the hot end alone. It comes with the Bowden tube and everything and the wires, but I still need the fan from my old one. So you can take this from your old hot end and the sleeve. I'm going to try to take the sleeve and the fan, put that on the new one, and then show you that when I'm done. Let me show you the trick with the sleeve. All you have to do, if you push it together, you see it becomes wider. And that's how you can pass the wire through it. So you can see I'm pushing the sleeve in, then it becomes wide. And that's how you pull it in to get the wire through. Hopefully you get the idea. It's actually really easy. Uh, it looks difficult, but it's not at all. So all you have to do with the sleeve, and I had to try a little bit to figure this out, but I thought it was going to be hard, but it's not at all. And you can see that I'm getting the sleeve to pass. And here is my wires. I'm almost done, actually. I just finished putting on the sleeve, and I mounted the hot end on the rail. I also put on the belt back so you can see that the belt is back on and now i want to put the fan and don't forget the zip tie for the uh sleeve for the for the cables here i want to mount the fan first so i can get a good measurement and know where to put the zip tie then we will put the bowden tube and do the wiring so just finished installing the fan and i got a good measurement on the cable and i added a zip tie on the sleeve now I'm just going to do the cable management. Also, I put my CR touch here. If you don't have a CR touch, you can skip it, but the hot end in place. I'm going to do the wiring. I opened up the motherboard cover so we can take out the direct drive hot end cables and put in my new hot end cables. So we're going to need to access to the motherboard. Now we're just going to do the cable management. To be able to do the cable management, we need to remove this bottom cover for the motherboard. So not just the top, but the bottom as well. There are three screws, two here at the front. So I've tilted the printer and be careful when you do that, make sure you're not breaking anything. And there is another screw here that we're gonna take off, cut these zip ties or whatever you have here. So you get access to the cables from the bottom as well as the top. So we'll take this cover off and just take the wires and put the new one in. Now I took the whole motherboard out. Let me see if I can point the cables that I just replaced to you here. So we have the white one here. This is the thermistor cable. This is the white plug here. The next one is going to be the hot end itself. And it's going to be these two red cables. So not these thick red cables, not these, it's these two red ones. And the last two is, let me see if I can go in there. There you go. And here we have this black cable and this red cable, these two. And we have the fan cable, which is the blue and the yellow here. So these are the wires that I just replaced. And you can see here that I zip tie everything together. Make sure the cable management is nice and clean. Nothing is touching. But again, these are the cables that I replaced. So these thin red and black, these two red ones for the hot end, the white one for the thermistor, and the yellow and uh, blue one here for the fan. So now you have an idea of which cable I replaced. Uh, it was a little bit difficult to film everything while I'm replacing the cables. Also, it takes a while, so I don't want to waste your time, but it's really easy. Uh, just be careful and replace these cables. Now, we just need to do the cable management after I put this cover back on. So remember, we took this cover out from here. So I'm just going to have to screw this back on, and we will do the cable management. Now everything is done here. Let's talk about the cable management quickly. So I did route the original cable with the CR touch cable. This is the CR touch cable along with the Bowden tube. 
I zip tied everything, so make sure they're nice and clean. Also make sure that you have a full range of motion. So test out the full range when you do the cables. Uh, I do, I'm using the dual gear here for the extruder. So if you do have a dual gear, you do not have that knob where you can zip tie the cables. I just zip tie the cables to the stepper. You can skip the step if needed. And uh, the rest of the cables, I also like to tie the cables down here on the rail. And you can see they still have room to move. So make sure they're not very tight, but they that way they're out of the way from the bed. So the bed can move uh, back and forth without having to get tangled up in these cables. So make sure everything is nice and clean. Um, if you are not using the dual gear, this is it. And maybe you just need to re-level the bed. If you have a CR touch, you might need to readjust the offset level for the CR touch. If you have the dual gear, I will show you the settings adjustment that I will make here in a minute. So stay tuned. If you have a dual gear, I'll show you the settings that we need to make um, an adjustment to. Otherwise, double check everything, retest, maybe re-level the bed, and we're all done here. So let's look at the settings, and we're almost done. The very last thing here to do is to check the bed leveling just in case anything moved. And if you do have a CR touch, you might need to adjust that prop Z offset. Let me show you how to do that real quick. In case you have a CR touch, you go under control. And here we're going to go under bed leveling. This is the prop Z offset. We might need to adjust this value depend on the new mounting level. So just double check. Hopefully not, but even if you do, there might be a small adjustment needed. Now, uh, let's talk about that uh, dual gear extruder. If you have a dual gear extruder like I do here, you need to adjust the E-steps in the settings. Let me show you how to do that. You go under control and then under motion, we are going to go under steps. The original value is 94 or 93. But if you have a dual gear, you need to increase that. Mine, the E-steps is 144.2. So you might need to adjust that. Check the user manual for the product that you purchased. It's likely, if it's similar to mine, you probably need to do 144. But depending on the one you have, it might be different. So double check that user manual. This is how you adjust the E-steps for the dual gear extruder if you have one. If you don't, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, this is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.